It's a name so legendary in motorcycles that it conjures up images of loot drops from epic raid bosses. The Honda Fireblade, the nickname for their Apex Predator Super Sport, starting all the way back in 2003. But new for 2021, Honda managed to find another R making a world's first triple R bike in the form of the CBR 1000 RR Fireblade SP, which reads more like the code on a shipping label than the name of a bike. Silly names aside, Side, Honda built the 2021 Blade to be the king of world superbike, but we all know how that's gone. Don't let that dissuade you from living out your ultimate fantasies as a MotoGP racer, because for a scant $28,500, you too can LARP as Marc Marquez. Now, we've had the Fireblade in the shop for four months now, and in that time, we've put around 500 miles in the saddle, both on road and on track, and have developed a lot of thoughts about the bike and its place in the market. And today, we're going to give you the final word on the brand new Fireblade. So first of all, why do we have the Fireblade in the shop? We picked this bike up as part of our expert bike giveaway series, meaning that someone out there in the audience is getting this world-endingly fast leader bike for free. It is literally going to show up in someone's driveway, which is crazy when you think about it. I actually remember cutting the check myself at the dealership and it made me shed a small tear, but I knew what I had to do. If you want to be that person who gets the keys and title mailed to them, click the link down below and sign up to win. You have 12 days left to get your entries in so don't sleep on this bike it's truly one of a kind get yourself merch over on merch.yamanude.co some gear over on our store shop.yamanude.co or you can sign up on our discord server on the classic yamanube.co now when you hop on the fireblade the package is so crazy over the top in terms of electronic doodads and menus upon menus that you can be forgiven for not being wowed by the engine at all first don't get me wrong it is blisteringly fast in stock trim but it doesn't scream like you might expect a race bike with lights to. When you first start it up, it sounds like just another leader bike thanks to a thousand sensors and valves between you and the bike. The engine is basically a work of art. It's a 999cc inline four, putting down 214 horsepower at 14,500 RPM and 83 foot-pounds of torque goes at 12,500 RPM. God, that's high for that torque. And while those are the biggest numbers you're gonna find in a Japanese leader bike, they're not the thing to write home about. The real reason the engine is so wild is because it uses the exact same bore and stroke as the RC213V MotoGP race bike. Now, does that mean you're going to be able to tune it to make the same 300 horsepower at the rear wheel? No, but on a bike with features list longer than the bill for the Turbo Busa, it can get lost. Before we talk about how it makes its power, let's talk a bit about the quote-unquote controversy regarding the American version of the motorcycle. When the bike was first unveiled and Honda proudly told the world the specs, there was a little asterisk next to the number that referenced about 1,000 footnotes in itsy-bitsy please don't read this font that said European version. They later came out and said that the blade was going to be limited to 186 horsepower for the US spec. Cycle World ran a brand new American Fireblade on the dyno and got an absolutely pathetic Beta Soy Boy 165 horsepower and 74 foot pounds of Torgarinos at the wheel, which is 21 less horsepower than Honda claimed and 49 less horsepower than the Euro model. Why the difference? Who knows? Honda won't say, but if I had to guess, they thought our cheeseburger eaten Harley loving country could not possibly withstand the release of such a powerful motorcycle. That claim is entirely unsubstantiated and unfalsifiable, but it sounds right. Anyways, how does all that power translate? to the road. Well, before we flashed the bike, it rode exactly like a massive R6. All the power is at the tippy top of the power band, meaning if you want to extract every single pony from this bike, you're going to have to rev the tits off of it. The gearing is also crazy long, with first gear ending at 95 miles an hour. If you were so inclined, you could literally take the shifter arm off the motorcycle and ride around like you're on a super scooter, but chances are the bike would throw fit and shower you in trouble codes. More on that later. Now, Unlike the R6, it's a leader bike, means it's got a decent amount of torque down low, but it makes that peak torque at 12,500 RPM, so even if all you want to experience the torque, you have to wait a long time to get everything the bike has to offer. There's no way on God's green earth you'd be able to extract even a fraction of the bike's potential on the street, and that's in stock trim. With the flash, the Honda Fireblade is easily the second fastest motorcycle I have ever ridden. To say that you enter hyperspace on the Fireblade is putting it mildly. When 
the bike hits the power band, it can be genuinely frightening how quickly it picks up speed. With all the nannies turned off, 0 to 60 would be genuinely terrifying, and 60 to 160 happens in the blink of an eye. If you've never ridden a leader bike before, the fire blade might actually be a bad starting place because while every modern leader bike is fast, the blade hits kind of different. It's a weird thing to say, but you might actually be safer on something like an R1 or a Gixxer 1000. Is tuning the bike worth $800? Probably not, but at the point where you've dumped the better part of a down payment for a house into a motorcycle, what's another grand? Now look, we all know the fire plate is pretty damn fast, but one of the reasons we love it is because it looks so cool with its aggressive lines and winglets, that crazy paint job, and wait a minute, is that gooch juice on the seat I see? Did you ride around on a motorcycle as prestigious as the fire blade without shaved testicles? How dare you? It's an insult to the motorcycle and most importantly an insult to your junk. You already know that Manscaped is the cure to what ails your balls, you're probably sick of pubes getting stuck in your zipper, or taint stinks so powerful it'll melt eyebrows clean off your face, and get yourself the lawn more 4.0 for Manscaped. It is the fire blade of ball shavers, but the fun doesn't stop there. They've got an all new body wash so you can make yourself smell as pretty as you feel and a whole bunch more. Click the link down below and check out everything Manscaped has to offer your balls and get 20% off your order applied automatically. Do it, your papa commands you to shave your junk. Now, while you might not get the full appreciation for the engine when you first get the bike, there's no possible way to miss how this motorcycle handles. The front end feel is nothing short of magical and it brings a Honda wing shape tear to my eye every time I take the bike through a corner. There's a few things that make this bike handle so well, and let's start off with the frame. It's a beefed up twin spar aluminum frame that's designed to be as light and as rigid as possible, connecting to a swing arm specifically engineered for this bike. It doesn't share it with any other motorcycle. When you look at the welds on the frame and the swing arm, you can almost see the clean room environment that it was built in, with the robot arm being piloted by someone outside so that a single hair doesn't land out of place and ruin the joint. Am I being deliberately over dramatic in my description of this motorcycle? motorcycle? Eh, maybe, but honestly, when you're dealing with a bike designed to be the true superlative like this hyperbole comes naturally. Moving on from the frame, you've got an electronically adjustable Olin's NPX fork taking measurements thousands of times a second and making minute adjustments for you. The NPX forks alone account for probably $5,000 and another grand or two for the shock out back. And if you're paying that kind of money for your suspension and doesn't make a choir of angels sing while weeping tears of joy, then something's gone terribly wrong. On the streets, it's a nice cherry on top, but on a racetrack, it's like a religious experience. This frame and the way this bike handles might as well have been designed by the gods because the front end feel is just divine. I did an entire track review on the bike and attempted to do as much justice as I possibly could, but even as an A group track day rider with some club racing experience under my belt, the fire blade feels like it just laughs at my skill set. I was able to put down some spicy times around Eagles Canyon Raceway in Decatur, Texas with it, but at the end of the day, it's a competition homologated race bike designed for world caliber talent to wield it. If you're not an expert level club racer or a Moto America rider, I really don't see why you'd need one of these things. The riding experience is basically like an R6 on cocaine around the track. The power is made exactly the same and you need to keep it on the boil for it to work correctly. But getting it on the boil and staying on that boil is nuts. The surge in top end power is like nothing you've experienced before and driving off of an apex with that much juice is madness. And that was before I had the ECU flashed on the bike. For the entry level track day guy, this is a ludicrous place to start and you're basically going to be sh yourself every lap while you hang on for dear life. For an average track day bro, this is going to feel like a very aggressive heavy R6 that feels like an ICBM when you twist the throttle and your lap times will probably be slower than when you're on your 600. For the expert level club racer, you'll probably ask yourself why you went with the most expensive Japanese option when a Jixer Thou was 40% of the price and got you 98% of the lap time bad trade deal. If you're thinking that all that technology might cause the bike to be a bit heavier than the competition, let me put your minds at ease, because the Fireblade tips the scale at 443 pounds wet and ready to ride, which is right on par with the modern crop of leader bikes. To make a long story short, the Honda Fireblade handles every bit like a $28,500 motorcycle should. But while we're on the topic of handling, one thing I'd like to mention is the ergonomics on the bike. Everyone always points to bikes like the R6 or the Daytona 675R as being stupidly committed in terms of ergos, but with the release of the Fireblade, we've got a new front runner for the most uncomfortable bike on the face of the planet. The peg height is so high from stock that WSBK riders and even BSB riders are going in and lowering the foot pegs to make the bike more comfortable 
terrible and it's not having an impact on cornering performance, which makes you wonder why Honda made them so dang aggressive in the first place. If I had to guess, it's probably to increase the maximum lean angle a degree or two and that Honda spec sheet simps have one more arrow in their quiver for online arguments. And again, it's not me saying the pegs are too damn high, it's actual professional racers. So there. The last major talking point on the blade is its tech package and how unbelievably sophisticated it is. Since almost everything on the motorcycle is controlled by a computer or monitor by some sensor, you can adjust every little parameter on the bike from the obvious to the ridiculous. First of all, let's start with the fact that this motorcycle 100% requires Starship level technology to make it even rideable in the first place. The bike is making so much power even in stock trim that all the nannies really do serve a purpose. Even if you're not pushing hard enough to engage the traction control or wheelie control, the front brakes are so powerful that in a panic stop situation without ABS, you just easily pull an endo and quite literally go ass over tea kettle. Of course, you can go in and program your various levels for power output, traction control, intervention ABS, wheel slip and slide controls, but you can also change the amount of pressure it takes to trigger the quick shifter and how stiff you want the steering stabilizer. Yes, you can adjust the steering stabilizer on the fly through the dash. Insane. There's even a race start mode where the bike automatically warms itself up for you. If you want to change something on the bike, chances are it's in there. Which brings me to the menus. My god, diving into the menus is trying to decipher Martian hieroglyphics sometimes. When we took the Fireblade to the drag strip, trying to activate launch control was so complicated that it required the combined brain power of myself, Spite, and Josh, and we couldn't even figure out how to activate it. Maybe I'm just an old fart now, but I like my modes to be as easily programmable and all my cool whiz-bang features to just be a button press away. That brings me to the downside of all the technology. When we were out at the drag strip, the tech literally made the motorcycle impossible to launch. When we put a slip-on exhaust in the motorcycle, it was so unhappy that we had to put the bike back in the stable until we could flash it. Hell, even when we flashed the bike, we needed to get some guy to hack into the mainframe and use some janky looking bootleg software to get new maps on the bike. If you're buying a Fireblade hoping to modify it or set it up how you want, you'd better be prepared with a code reader and a tech manual so you can figure out all the various issues the bike's gonna have. But who am I kidding? If you're picking up a blade like this and like you're gonna be modifying it yourself, you're gonna take it to the dealership or your local race shop. It's basically Honda's version of the V4 and the tagline for the bike should be, no touch, only look and weep. With all that being said, what do I think about the Fireblade? The Fireblade is an exercise in excellence by the biggest of the big four. It's Honda laying down the law and saying to the world, in case you forgot, we are the largest motorcycle manufacturer in the world with the most amount of capital and we are the most winning in GP2. Pedigree and racing are our middle and last names. This is Honda doing what Honda does best, engineering something to the nth degree just to go race it on weekends. We're just lucky that we live in a world where you can just go get one of these with a factory warranty. It's a race bike with headlights, 215 horsepower and all the tech goodies you could ask for, all for a little under a down payment for a house in middle America. Not too shabby, Honda. Hopefully you enjoyed our comprehensive review on the Honda CBR 1000 RR Fireblade SP. Do let me know down below if you like this format for our comprehensive reviews, and while you're down there, don't forget to get entered to win this absolute beast of a leader bike. You've only got 12 days left, so get your entries in while you can. Catch you in the next one. See well, you later. Well, 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 my little squid, you've made it to the end of yet another Yammy Noob video. Thank you so much much for watching just for you got a little treat for you right over here brand new video for you you can watch it check it out it's probably some squidding some street riding maybe some track riding maybe i'm bending my ducati off-road who knows what's going on in that video you should probably click on it and find out